Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. Well, this ba battle has started rather quickly. Oh, and we're being squeezed out by a Dickamax, who's being a complete dick. Oh, Max. Yes, oh, I couldn't avoid that joke, I'm afraid. Well, this game started rather suddenly because there was no countdown, but we are following Hospitals, and he's in his bishop again. This time on Himmelsdorf, and this is one of the few battlefields where the bishop can have a lot of fun at the other tank's expense, mainly down to the fact that we can shoot up over the top of the buildings and hit enemy tanks where they're not expecting to be hit. Okay, he's trying to hit an M, uh, M4A3E8 there, but he fired the round in at the, when the guy was at his furthest point while he was reloading. So now he's going to fire onto this corner, and the guy pulls back. So does Hospitals when he aims, which is usual for him. Okay, going for the KV-222, pulls back, and he gets a direct hit. 136 on that tier 7 hull on a tier 5 tank. Okay, he's going to go for it again. Fires it in. And we just get to see it out of the corner of the screen. In the meantime, because it's an encounter game and it's a tier 6 game with tier 5 tanks in it, he's decided to aim towards the cap area because he might be able to get a defender medal if there's enemy tanks. The other side, there is. There's somebody there. And they just took the shell. And I think it was a direct hit from the AMX on the AMX 12 ton. And I think he might have actually penetrated that guy. So that was quite a useful shot because that actually did get a reset. Tries to get the KV-220 and he's actually tracked by our near miss. So can we get another shot onto him? Rounds out. Yes, we do. And that keeps him tracked whilst we're getting damage assist. Come on, hit the guy. Rounds out. Going for the engine deck. Oh, he got a fire! And yes, he's got an arsonist. He's just taken out that enemy KV-222 and got a kill by setting him alight. Okay, right up on top of the hill, we've got a heavy tank number six, a Panzer von Fier, obviously one of the most dreaded of the premium tanks because, of course, they do have a wicked fire rate. But he's going for the KV-2, which is tier six. Obviously, he can get a lot of damage on this guy. Rounds out. Aim for the front. Gets a hit. Right on his upper plate. 148 from that one. Now, if he repeats that again, he might get a kill. Not quite. 148. It's a one shot. He goes down. The bump fear kills our easy eight. Now, he's trying to get round those wrecks. Rounds out. Bit late. But it still hits. It hits the rear of the vehicle. Now, he's decided to move down towards the cap area. The enemy is now starting to come down the hill. If he doesn't move soon, he won't get a chance to because they'll nail him before he gets through that uh, street that leads to the cap area. Fires one shot at the Panzer von Fier. Our VK-301P is putting up a good fight whilst he's being pushed back down the hill. Oh! He got a kill shot there and took out the heavy tank number six with a shot that landed on his engine deck as he was pushing that VK down the hill. Excellent, that. Oh, we missed that. That would have been quite nice, seeing the pump fear get hit. Yes, Hospitals hasn't changed. He still does this thing where he pulls back after he shoots. He doesn't do it all the time. That's the reason why I think it's more psychological than anything else. That he doesn't want to see the damage he's doing he feels guilty about it or at least that's what i think it's a guilt reaction okay there are enemy tanks nearby he can still hit this it's a box tank well he did get a direct hit there i'm going to try and take control of the camera because he keeps pulling away okay we're loaded fires and we miss Okay, he's staying in the aim mode, which now makes it very difficult for us to uh, see exactly what he's doing. But this is his view as he's moving about. He's almost driving using the force. Okay, there's that box tank. He's 
holding our guys back. He's having a quick look to the south. There are enemy tanks down there. There's a KV-1 down there, but from this position, I think he, he's going to have difficulty. Oh, the box tank has gone. Killed by our BK. Okay, we're looking for that KV-1. We're two up on the enemy. They do have some guys further down here, but because we're not capping, there's no urgency for us to move. He decided to try that little gap between the houses where tanks can poke out. Oh, the Panzer von Deer is very, very close now. I think he suddenly realized that he's turning himself around to try and get his gun to bear this 4.5 inch howitzer capable of 450 alpha. Now, it might be a sudden hit. Oh, wipes him out with one round right in the face. So at least he's uh, coming away with uh, three kills out of this game so far. There is an enemy RT in this game. It's an M41 HMC, but I think he's probably down in the south somewhere. In fact, enemy tanks have now been spotted. And they're way back in the south. Yes, we can see the M41. We're trying to dial in. He's waiting for a shotgun. Rounds out on him. He must know his... Oh, that's a penetrating shot. Completely wipes out the M41. So there's only one enemy left. It's the Wolverine. We're probably close enough to actually get a shot on him now. We're lining it up. We're having to move just to... I think we're... Oh, we're in the aim. Rounds out, and well, he didn't get the kill. That went to the Dickamax. The uh, the guy was a bit of a nuisance at the start, but it is a victory. Well, that was a very quick battle, but it was also an ace tanker game for Hossballs in the Bishop. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. The M41 HMC was the fourth kill. You also got an arsonist because he set light to that KV-220 and he burned up. You also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get 14 in this game. And his win eight for this game, 11,456. So, Super Unicum and a lot more. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, we can see he actually got the second highest damage in the game. The highest damage actually went to the Baguette Panther with 2,688 hit points of damage. He picked up a high caliber in the steel wall. Second highest damage went to horse balls with 2,609. And the third highest damage in this game by one hit point went to the Poodle who got 1,891, beating the Poodle on the enemy team with 1,890. Would you believe that that guy's gonna be really annoyed? But anyway, when it came to kills, it was horse balls. He got four kills. Two kills went to the Baguette, the Poodle, the E8, the Dickamax, and on the enemy team, their Fumpfeer and their KV-2. That Fumpfeer driver, well, I think he made a bit of a boo-boo there, but he may not have realized that Hospitals was around the corner, but he took a, a, a very wide arc coming around that corner. If he'd stopped at the corner, he might have been able to get shots on Hospitals without Hospitals being able to return fire. But as it was, he came around that corner and gave Hospitals a perfect shotgun shot, uh, even if uh, Hospitals was using that weird way of aiming that he does. Uh, by being in view um, all the time, even while he's driving. Anyway, when it came to base XP, it was the Baguette who came out on top with 1,335. The Poodle managed 1,120. And then we've got Hospitals with 964. So third place on that one, even though he got the uh, second highest damage and the highest number of kills. He fired 22 rounds in the game. You actually get uh, 39 rounds of ammunition. So... He um, still had 17 rounds left at the end of the game. 14 direct hits on the enemy, two penetrating shots. I think we do know which one uh, one of those penetrations was. It would have been the M41 HMC because it was a direct hit and it wiped him out completely. The other penetrating shot on this one, no, it wasn't the from fear, funnily enough. Was it the KV-220? No, it wasn't that one either. The heavy tank? No. The Wolverine? No, the box tank. No, I wonder. Yes, it was the AMX 12 ton. I did say at the time, actually, I thought that he penetrated that guy because he came out that corner missing a huge amount of hit points. 
he actually penetrated the AMX 12 ton that was hiding behind that brick house in the railway yard. And uh, yes, got a penetrating shot on a little light tank. So um, let's have a look at the rest. Eight enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, so not close enough to a, a Confederate. 238 hit points of damage assistance, and he got 16 defense points when he reset the AMX 12 ton. On a free-to-play account, he made a profit, a tiny one, of 3,386 credits. And that's mainly down to the fact that he had consumables, which were, of course, the um, uh, pudding and tea. 964 base XP, no multipliers. That's all the experience points he took away. But uh, yes, it's Hospels being Hospels again, playing the bishop. Uh, I do wish he would learn to, to stay and watch what, the, uh, what actually happens to the enemy tanks without pulling back. Um, but I suppose we can just carry on, you know, playing around with the mouse and going to free cam when he does his thing um, so that we get to see what happens to the shell. I hope you enjoyed the replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel because we're getting very close to having 3,000 subscribers. Yes, I know a lot of other channels, they have tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of subscribers. We are a very niche channel, but we do our best. And thank you for watching.